and welcome back to NFL Playoff Pick'em, our final episode of Season 2. And uh, I'm back at home because Catlin Hall's haunted, so I got out of there. We had some issues again, so I'm back here. Lovely. Yes, we I am joined with EJ the Cobra Samuel. Yeah, very, very underwhelmed EJ the Cobra Samuel. <laughs> I, was just... I think a lot of people could say that after the game on Sunday. This reminds me of the 2012 NFL season. Do you know what happened in the 2012 NFL season? Tell the us Steelers, Steelers played like garbage, and then the Ravens won the Super Bowl. Oh, <laughs> It was a lose-lose because I didn't like the Niners at that point. They don't really technically mind the Niners now. They, they've got some different personnel and stuff I like right. versus the Ravens. So it was like, man, but 2013 was good. It's pretty decent. So. Yeah. Here's open. You know what I mean? Right, um, right. I just, man. And go ahead, because I already know I lost. I already yeah, know I lost. So we're going to go through our, fi- our final rankings. Everybody picked the 49ers to win the Super Bowl here. All all six of our participants did. And did um, we had a four-way tie uh, for second, third, fourth, and fifth. And um, here's how they ended up uh, criteria-wise, point differential-wise. Here we go. So Zach Valeski finished first with a record of 7-6, and six, the only winning record of it. So he is the champion for Good this for one. You. Good, Good job, for you. Zach. Good for you. All right. Good job. Second place at a record of 6-7, and seven, Jake Jones, because he got the – I think it was – he picked the 49ers, the one 24-21. He got the game wrong, but the point differential was, um, was, was the closest. I couldn't have been far off, right? No, you picked 27-24. Okay, so that should, despite, or with everyone else, that should put me what, third? Third, yes, so you got third. Hey, top three, yeah, podium. top three. We're still podium. Yes, and um, your brother Isaiah, he picked the 49ers 24-17, uh, but I also did that as well, and we had to go into other criteria, like a wrestling uh, overtime. You had to go into the different criterias. So, um mm. How we did it was whoever got um, the last game correct. So, like, the week before. So, we go through all the previous picks, and whoever was the most recent to get a game right gets the advantage. And your brother got both the conference championships right, and I got both of them wrong. So, that put him at fourth at six and seven, and I got fifth at six and seven. Mm-hmm. And, Kayla, I'm sorry, you finished five and eight. You got last. Good effort, hey, though. Valiant effort, man. Because some of these games, these were tough games. I they mean, were, I had no, a very this was a good time. playoff. This, this, this was. I agree. This was a very good playoff. I had a, I had a very, very hard time, um, doing that. that. No, I agree. Yeah, no, it was, it was tough to pick some of these games, especially with some of the teams in there. The Lions getting as far as they did, uh, the Bucks, like stuff like that, like that, just like the Texans too, like some of these teams that we never see. You know how I mean? do you, how do you judge the Texans in Cleveland? Like, right, that's just know, like. That that's stuff that if you told somebody four years ago was happening, you they laugh at you. Yeah, they laugh at you. So, um, what do you say, Jake? You want to break this down? Yeah. Well, I think me being along with most of America, uh, not happy with either team being in it to begin with. Yeah. And honestly, mm-hmm. for what for what we got, it wasn't a bad game. It was it was an entertaining game. I sure, sure would have liked to see Brock Purdy get a ring, but, you know, went into overtime. Second one in NFL history, right? I'm correct on that? Is the uh, Second one. Yeah, second one in history. For overtime, yeah. Yeah, because the Falcons-Patriots did a couple years ago. Um, but um, second one in NFL history, um, Kansas City dynasty, I don't – what do you think on that? Like, everyone's saying it's the start of another Patriots-like thing. Like, what do you think about that? Uh, I think it is – I think there's some help, but I think that it is. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I hope I didn't lag out there. No, you didn't. You're okay. good. You're good. You We're didn't trying lag. something. We're trying something today. Yeah. All right. Let's go. Um. So let's just talk really quickly, Jake. You and I. Yeah. Uh. Any of you over 21 people that were able to bet on stuff? Uh. The proper bets would take Kansas City. They finished plus two. Uh, and then the if you've bet on the over like I did, uh, forty six and a half, uh, you were correct. I took the over, and I got it. 
Good job. I also took I also took Gronk missing the field goal. Did you right. really? Wide right. Nice. Yeah. There you use go. Promo, so more. Use promo code KR uh, Fishboy uh, on uh, FanDuel, and you get I'll all this stuff. I'll put that on the screen here. I'll put that on the screen. Use code Fishboy. Do FanDuel. So on FanDuel. Please just do it. Do it because do it, it do helps it. my brother out. <laughs> yes, it does. It does. It supports and EJ. it helps me out. It helps me out. Point five KRZ. It helps him out. So help local radio. Anyway, let's talk about what happened in this game, Jake. I don't know if you're up, you're up for that. You got anything else to say? Uh, I'll talk a little bit more. I mean, I, I, I'm honestly like the more we look at it, that game was mostly field goals. If you look at the scoring, I mean, there wasn't yeah. that many big plays. It, it was mostly like field goals and stuff. Like the only really big play was that um reverse to the uh, Christian McCaffrey. Yeah, that was like the yeah, only big that. play. Mm-hmm. The other, uh, can I tell you something? About yeah, the Niners. They're going to be a problem down the road, especially if they're that unpredictable. Uh, I thought that they did a good job moving the ball around. Oh, yeah. Granted. Especially at the beginning, uh, dude. CMC was running all over them. It was crazy. And Exactly. And that was that was the variable of how this Super Bowl was going to pan out. It was whether McCaffrey was going to get the job done or not, and he did. Really, I think he got the job oh, yeah, done. Oh, yeah, no. And... I agree with that. I was just going to say that he did not cost them that game. CMC did his part. It was uh, – it turned into the Mahomes show towards the end. Yeah, um, I agree. I would have thought you'd see Travis Kelsey more. He only had one reception in the first half. Yeah. And we'll talk about what he did to Andy Reid, which I think is still disgusting no matter what explanation you give. I agree. And, I, um, I Not necessary at all. I, I, I yeah. agree. And we'll talk about that. Um, and then also – I mean, then in the second half, he kind of goes off. I don't know if Taylor told him he wasn't he wasn't going to get anything after or what. And I'm sorry, but I, that's the first thing that came to my mind on why he kind of did what he did. Well, sure. But, hey, hey, everybody is focusing in on that right now. Like, I mean, let me tell you something. If I was told it's not happening unless this happens, I'm getting my button gear and, and going out and having a monster second Yeah, for your half, girlfriend, I, of personally. course. For your lady? Yeah. Absolutely. You live and die by that, man. You live and die by that. <laughs> so anyway, yeah. but my I guess my overall thoughts on the Super Bowl before we get into like a like a summary like we did last time was just I guess it was underwhelming, but overtime neat. Overtime was neat. Um, and I mean I got a couple bets that fell. Um, to where I guess I guess it's okay. Right. And unfortunately, we're just going to have to find that next Eagles, 2018 Eagles, that's going to yeah. have to stop them. You know? I know. That's, and that's, that's just the way it. it is. And here's hoping that um, here's hoping that, that could probably be like the Lions or something. Oh, that would be um, amazing. I'd want to see I'd that. I'd love it I to see be that like now. the Lions. Not that I want it to be the Eagles, but that might not be a bad thing. Maybe if the Eagles win, and this is no offense to you, but maybe if the Eagles win a second Super Bowl in, the, in here, maybe they'll – just like relax and calm down. Hopefully, I don't know. Anyway, um, would also love to see, um, love to see Seattle back. Yeah, would love to see them. A little bit of a Seahawks comeback. Be, could we have a Seahawks comeback? I guess we'll see. I, I don't know. Um, I, I, I don't, I don't see it happening right now. But again, I never thought the Texans would be as good as they were too. So you know what I'm saying? They were. They were. They were good. They were a good football team this year. And they're gonna be. For a long time. Oh, I agree. Uh, Especially now let's, God, I agree. Let's get into this game because there's a lot to unpack besides scoring. Um, but you know, scoreless first quarter. Yeah. Right, Jake? And we thought that there was gonna be it was gonna be explosive because you and I talked earlier before the game had started. We thought there was gonna be an explosive first quarter. We yeah. thought it was gonna be explosive at the at the we front, did but it, say it that. just we did on the last episode. We were there was some running and it was great, but nothing. Nobody really got a chance to do anything. McCaffrey got all the way down the field and then fumbled, but Kansas City was not able to do anything. And right. let me tell you something: the Chiefs looked lost in that first half. Like the 49ers defense took advantage, yeah, and that's what a dominant defense does, right? And and it wasn't even just the defense too. Like watching that first quarter, that the the I, I'm telling you is all Chris McCaffrey, Chris McCaffrey, oh, yeah. Trent Williams. Come on, that run game. The run game in the first quarter was incredible for the 49ers. The Chiefs had no answer to that at all. 
Absolutely. And that's exactly why I think um, the Niners were able to score first, which came at the 1448 mark of the second quarter. Right. Uh, they put them up 3 nothing. So these kick right down the middle. 55 yards, though, set yeah. a record for the longest in the Super Bowl. Oh, no, it was 57. Bowl. 57, I thought. No, it was 55. Oh, it was 55. Bucker okay. at 57. Oh, okay. I think. Yeah, Bucker at 57. Uh, and then – Things are happening again. A little bit, a couple stalemates, and then McCaffrey plays on one of the craziest, weird gadget plays that I didn't know what the heck was going on. They right, snapped yeah. the ball, and he threw it over, and I was like, "Now run!" But then he stops and goes backwards, and he turns over, uh-huh. and McCaffrey with a great, great throw to Juwan Jennings of Tennessee. And then it's 10 nothing, And all of a sudden, you feel the ball rolling there, Jake. Yeah. Right? You feel the ball rolling. You're like, okay. So the Chiefs can't get anything going on offense. Well, that's and that's now the what I was thinking. I was thinking that same thing. I'm like, the 49ers like, have this. What's going on here? But then you're getting towards the end, right? You get to the end of half. And Butker goes. And they go, okay, why not? Well, let's see what happens. We're 28 yards out. And they got to get points on the board. Right. It's 10-3 after 28-yard field goal. Mm-hmm. Whatever. Um, I got to say, because this is around the time where Ke- Travis Kelsey then shoves, and don't ever say it, he didn't, he shoves Andy Reid. He gets all in his face. Too. He gets all in his face and screams. And, folks, I I have advice. For all the kids watching, all the people, all the like high school kids, maybe some college kids that are trying to be athletes. Jake, this is for you. I know you would never do this, but it's still advice. Um, that's the first thing that I, as a broadcaster, am looking at. And we can make or break your career as broadcasters. Oh, yeah. No, I don't think. All that aside. I don't think, like, from what I've seen and heard, and this is no offense to anybody, but I feel like athletes in the game – like people that play, especially me being an athlete and doing media and, and com- communication stuff like that. I feel like they don't realize what media can do to them. Like yeah. their, yeah. their whole reputation, like, like if I did something really bad in a, in a game or something and that got spread around, even if it's all local that has media, to do is get in the that's, newspaper. That's the problem. People don't realize that local media can do that to you. Like they're like, oh, oh it's my only, gosh, yes. only WNEP. Oh, it's only the, this guy on Twitter. No, it, it can it yeah. can really like it can it can. You help. gotta watch. I'm telling you, as a, as a guy in the media, as a guy who does football in the media, right? You literally you, guys, call, you, you call, have you to be radio. careful. You have to be careful because if I see something like. Like you get nasty with a teammate because you missed a pass or something. It's okay to get into the game, but if you if you miss a pass or this and that, you gotta just life goes on. If you get in the face like Travis Kelsey did to Andy Reid at a, at a smaller level, smaller towns, that's that stuff still goes around. Right. It doesn't go away. That can ruin your career. So here's my thoughts on Travis Kelsey. That was a um Bad move. I'm trying to think of the I'm, – I'm getting into radio mode because I can't cuss in about two hours. Right. So yeah. that was a not good moment. Uh, bad move. You you can't justify pushing a coach like that. And I think that if Andy Reid had any guts, he would have sat him. He would have sat Travis right. Kelsey for at least two series. Everyone knows, every athlete knows, if you disrespect the coach, you've got the coaches back on your rear end and you've got the team on your rear oh, end. Oh, yeah. No, Nobody I agree with that 100%. Coach. Yeah, especially in football. Especially in football. Yeah. When I was playing, well, I play college baseball. Who's that? Who's our uncle? Who's our Now, somebody said something to our manager. Somebody said something to our manager in fall league. And a lot of us came walking out of the dugout and we got threatened like, yo, no warnings. We're going to start throwing people. But right, we came yeah. to the rescue. I'm surprised that it didn't get that far. And what does that say to Taylor Swift? That's a red flag relationship wise. I got angry. If things don't go my way, I'm going to hit or push or yell and scream. Swifties, yeah. what do you guys think about this? That's that's terrible. You know that's what I mean? True. You can't be doing that. Just just terrible. But anyway, gotta include the Swifties here too. Got to include the Swifties. Got to include them. Got to get that. Got to be gotta less annoying. Yeah. Just be less annoying, and you'll be more than welcomed into football. Oh yeah, no, to have you. they're passionate. Anyway. They're passionate. So we move on, and the Chiefs yes. start cooking, starting yes. the second half. 
They do. Third goes about the 501 mark. Butker breaks Moody's record for a 57 yard field goal, and that cuts the lead to four points. So it's 10 6 San Francisco. And then about three minutes later, after a stalled drive from San Francisco, the Chiefs take the lead. Now, I thought, Jake, this drive was actually interesting because I saw Mahomes be a lot more mobile in this right. drive. He was trying to do things, and he was getting sacked. But this time, the one time he actually was like able to truly escape the pocket, he was able to do some stuff. Um, and he finds Marquez Valdez-Scanling, 16-yard touchdown pass, 13-10, Chiefs get the lead. And now we're saying in our heads, Jake, oh, boy, here comes yeah. the train. That's what I was saying. Like, that's when I, like, I, I really started to notice. I'm like, oh. Now, this is the question for you. Did you think the 49ers were dead in the water after that? Um, Not really. I'm going to be honest with you. Once the game hit overtime, I'm like, oh, yeah, I, I don't know. I I honestly, I honestly didn't think they were dead in the water until like overtime. I'm being dead serious. I thought they had a chance yeah. to come back. I thought they had opportunities to come back and win. Yeah. So, because I thought that, I thought they were going to have a problem because the Niners get the ball back after Scanling scores. Yeah. And I just, I don't know exactly. Like, I felt like it was just, this is not good. They're just, they start their drive. Then they started to stall and then they barely got the first down. And I'm like, yeah, this oh, is yeah. not going that. to end well. This is not going to end well. But once they got the first down, I'm like, okay. Then they go, then there's that incomplete pass. It was bad, almost picked off. Um, and then out of nowhere, Juwan Jennings scores. So that's two touchdowns for Juwan Jennings. Yes. Uh, but that puts the Niners in the lead, 16-13. And all of a sudden, you just find yourself, okay, they got life now. But then, of course, you know that the Chiefs are never done. And all Jim See, and Tony Romo ever do. That's the thing. This this year, all, listen, this year, I've said it on here many times, I never thought the Chiefs were that good. I didn't think they had a great season. For for them winning the Super Bowl, they did not have a good year. I'm saying no. that right now. But no, they did. They always found a way later in the game. I always noticed it took them a while to get it rolling. That was the thing I noticed with them all season. And I personally didn't think they were going to get very far. I thought I didn't think they were that good, especially some of the losses they had in the regular season. I don't know how they won the Super Bowl. I'm being honest with you. They aren't. And no. you know, I say that, but I also just mentioned the point that they always find a way, and they somehow did. And they shocked me. They, I think they shocked you too, even, right? Yeah. The Chiefs are not a good team. They're a good batch of like two players. That's what I'm saying. It, that's exactly what it is. You can't win. I, this is why I have a problem. This is why the Patriots, and even as a Steeler fan, I will say this. The Chiefs are not the Patriots. You're going to get a dynasty by virtue of Travis Kelsey and Mahomes running league. That's all you're going to get. You don't have a full team there. And you have like Chris Jones. Great. Whatever. Kadarius Tony. <laughs> he sat. He didn't even play. I know. Here's what the Patriots had. Edelman, Brady, and then any running back. Go ahead. There's tons of running backs, but they always had the pieces there. Sony that's Michelle. And like, it was first guy that comes to mind. Out. Do you know what I mean? And, yeah. and that's why I think cause the Chiefs are not a solid full team. The Patriots were a full team. You didn't play with them. All those guys on defense. Then they got James Harrison. Yes. Like, no way. Like that's that's a that. dynasty. That's a very they, good no point. Will. Like that's actually yeah. a really good point. Like because again, the, the Chiefs' defense is pretty good. Don't get me wrong. I mean, yeah, Chris it's Jones led by Chris dog. Jones. Chris it's Jones led by Chris dog. Jones. He's good. Like Trent McDuffie, he was irrelevant until Sunday. Yeah, that's true. I agree with that. Just like it, it call a spade a spade. You have to. Yeah. In sports talk, I, you have I, to. Call I never a spade really. I'll be honest with you, I never thought of that, but that's a really good point. Like, if you look at all the Patriot teams that won a Super Bowl, they had, whether it was, like, it was different guys, awesome. but it was always, always a consistent good core. Always. I completely forgot about Randy Moss. I was just going to say that. You didn't Randy mention Moss. Moss in the, the like, the, the almost undefeated season. Oh, yeah. When they, they lost the Giants, then they lost the Giants. But still, still. Yeah, they lost the Giants. Eli owns you. Eli owns um, the Patriots. Still. But that's the thing. <laughs> But when Juwan Jennings scores, it's 16-13. But you know that the Chiefs are going to come back because they've got Patrick Mahomes. He's really good. Uh, and you know what? I actually, as much as I don't like Patrick Mahomes, I always take 
credit for him with fourth quarters and stuff because they always compare Kenny Pickett in the fourth quarter because right. he's really only ever good in the fourth quarter. Kenny is. Um. So I like that little comparison. Well, of course. Of course. Right. You know. Now the Chiefs chewed a ton of clock, a ton, and yeah. they showed no sense of urgency. They ended up kicking the field goal because they got stopped a couple times. 546 mark. It's only 24 yarder, whatever. Tie at 16. Moody is ready. He knows like it's it's coming. And I think the 49ers could have even chewed a little more clock off. It was really interesting kind of getting down to the wire. Uh, but they get down there finally. Um, they ran Juszczyk. Wow. Like the only another puzzle piece. Left. The only true fullback left. Yes. And he he played a good part in this because he got them into pretty decent field position. Oh, yeah, he did. Um, he always does, man. He's good. And I thought – now let me tell you something. The Niners by this point have lost Greenlaw and lost Debo. And Debo came back a little bit. But, again, constant injuries. Well, Debo, Debo was out for a little bit. So, like, he's still – I honestly thought he was still, trying, left. still coming back a little bit. Oh, yeah. Kittle left. Then he came back. Then he left again. Then he came back again. Lots of injuries. But Greenlaw really sucked. But at the end of the day, Moody was close enough to snag a 53-yarder, which, my goodness, it's ridiculous every single time I say it. And it's 1916, and you're like, oh, my gosh. That only leaves the Chiefs with a little bit amount of time. Right, then that's, you what realize that, that's, that's exactly what I was thinking. Exactly and, what I was thinking in that moment right there. And then I, you understand – Patrick Mahomes is the quarterback of the Kansas City Chiefs. See, I didn't want to think that, but I, I, I kind of, you know, in the back of my mind, I'm and, like, still Mahomes. <laughs> and in 455 yards of total yards for the Chiefs, you knew it was going to be a lot of his feet getting him there. Oh, yeah. End of the day, of course, they get down there. Some questionable spots, but they do get down there, and the 49ers do – for the Chiefs, coming to the rescue for the Chiefs here, the Niners did have a chance to stop them, and they didn't. So they did hold them. They tied the game. Harrison Bucker kicks the 29 yarder, whatever, 1919, with three seconds left. Yeah. And uh, interesting, interesting. OT happens. Niners take the ball after winning the toss. That was questionable. Yeah, because the OT rules say both teams get a chance. Yeah. You know, to, so could you imagine if if they do hold the Chiefs to a field goal and they can go down and score, they would have won. Right. These are all questions, the what ifs that we'll never know. Yeah. But I don't understand <laughs> why the Chiefs took the ball. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, is that an interesting? But they do. And they're only to mu- able to muster three points, which is better than nothing in overtime. You got to take what oh, you can absolutely. get. Oh, You got to take whatever you can get in overtime. Absolutely. But is not a score, and you're facing Mahomes on the other side. You cannot give him time. Yeah, I. The entire field. If I, I honestly, I was hoping the 49ers would get the ball first, or no, the Chiefs would get the ball first. Sorry, that's what I meant to say. Uh, obviously, the, the, the 49ers would get the ball first, but I, I was hoping that I was hoping that the Chiefs would get the ball first because I had a feeling. If they got the ball first, they were going to get stopped. I honestly had that feeling. Uh, yeah, because it's I don't know what it is, but seeing somebody else do something first before you do it gives you an advantage just for right. some, some weird about reason. It. Especially in football. Especially in football. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, And so – but when Moody kicks that field goal, it makes it 22-19. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then the Chiefs get it. And, of course, everybody knows what happens. They get down there, and I think – they were going to kick the field goal, but then they got the first down. That puts them inside the 20. This is where it gets interesting, folks, because what I wanted to bring up was I wanted to bring up, um, you know, Patrick Mahomes threw the ball to score this this game-winning touchdown. Right. He had two. That was his second. But you have to understand, 333 passing yards doesn't come overnight. He was passing. But we were see it seemed like we were seeing a little bit more of like a still counts as a pass. I had to dump it off before I right. still counts as a pass. <laughs> you saw those little ones, but he did a ton of them, and that's why he had so many passing yards, except for this one where he decided to oh I don't know 
just launch it into the end zone. Yeah. <laughs> and some, and you would not believe me if, unless you watched it. If I told you with two Niners right there in overtime, McCole Hardman somehow gets his friggin' hand out up in front and catches the football and comes down for six. And the Chiefs yeah. win the Super Bowl 25 22. And as much as I didn't want the Chiefs to win, Jake, and I'm sure you probably, I'm sure you. Oh, have I didn't want them to win either. Oh, you, you know, know, you know, I didn't want them to win. <laughs> and it's, it, Especially as the last as, year. Oof. Oh yeah, but as much as I didn't want them to win, I got to hand it to them on that last play. Yeah, that took some guts to throw that where that was thrown, and that shows Mahomes. As much as he's annoying, as much as we hate him, he's still pretty darn good. He's still good. Oh That's, yeah, no. I'll never deny the fact that Matt Patrick Mahomes is an elite quarterback. I will never deny that fact. Yes, as much as I hate definitely. the Chiefs, I don't like him very much anymore. I liked him at first. I liked him when they first won, especially because of Andy Reid. Andy Reid is the sole reason why I can ever be happy for the Chiefs. That's the sole reason why I could ever be happy because I love Andy Reid. Always did. I love Andy uh, Reid too. Philadelphia Eagles legend. Loved Andy Reid. He, he was the coach when I started watching the Eagles as a young kid. So, like, I absolutely love him. He's just a great guy in general too. Yeah. And um, that's the only reason why I could ever be happy for the Chiefs, Andy Reid. Yeah. That's the only reason. So, that, but that's it. Uh, final uh, totals, I guess we'll go. We'll go um, for stats, okay. Yeah, so passing yards, 325 for the Chiefs, 272 for the Niners. You've got 130 rushing yards for the Chiefs, only 110 for the Niners. And about 89% of the rushing yards for the 49ers were McCaffrey, which means it shows you, you know, at eleven percent by Zuschik, they really used him they did. for a fullback. Um, the Chiefs only had one more first down than the Niners did. They had twenty-four. The Niners had twenty-three. Um, they both had fifteen passes for first downs. Yeah. Um, and then the average yards for passing attempts: six point eight for the Niners, six point six for the Chiefs. So you see in a couple of things now. Mahomes did throw that interception, uh, but. The Niners fumbled the ball twice. Yeah. So it kind of evens out. Um, and, and again, I, I just want to, I can't stress this enough, guys. Rushing yards, right? McCaffrey had 80. You, we saw Pacheco a little bit, but he was not enough to lead the team in rushing no. yards. That was Mahomes. No. Because like the, I said, he gets the feet going. Yeah, you did mention that. Yeah, no, it, it was it was pretty obvious that the 49ers, the, the rushing yards is going to be way more. Pacheco now, didn't have a terrible game, but not as no, good as CMC. Not, not as all. good as CMC. Not at all. I mean, that's they went to, they went to him in the overtime. They went to Pacheco. Yeah, he got him three yards, and he centered the play. He got the right. chance to center them back on the field so that they had enough to spread out. Um, sixty-six rushing yards for Mahomes, uh, ninety-three receiving yards for Kelsey. That's pretty decent. Mm. Uh, but Jair Brown, the only one to get an interception in the game, and two hundred and fifty-five passing yards for Brock Purdy as a rookie. In the Super Bowl, like guys, that's second not year, easy second to do. Year, second year, sophomore. He's technically a full rookie. Yeah, is the, he not? You know what? He's never the, had a full season before. Yeah, that's true. I I guess. Yeah. yeah, that's a good point. This is this was his first like full season as a starting quarterback, and first it's also the season. fact that he was the last pick in the draft. He was the Mister Irrelevant. That's another exactly. thing too. So I mean, so, you could call it a, you could call it a rookie season, but it's technically not. But I can see the point you're making there for sure. Yeah. So, and then finally, the stats are for, for Vegas, the odds and stuff. If you took the Chiefs on the spread, they did take this, they got the spread plus two. And if you took the Chiefs money line, you were also correct. They were plus 110. And if you took the over on the Niners, uh, 46 and a half, you were also correct. If you took Gronk missing the field goal, you were also correct. Also and if correct. you took Taylor Swift being shown on the screen less than 20 times, you were also correct because they yeah. showed her 17. Was it 17? I thought it was less than that. 17. You know, NFL. I counted. That's, that's, that's less than they have been. Good job. Good for you, NFL. Good for you. Good, Good job, Roger you. Goodell. Yes. All right. All right. Well, uh, well that's, that's all I saw. That's, um, that's, that's it. You basically covered it all. You're the stat guy, so I let you kind of go on with all that. Yeah, you're right. You're Chris Collinsworth. I'll be out. <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Just give me where, whatever you think, man. Whatever exactly, you exactly. But yeah, so this was fun. We'll be back next year with her season three. Uh, hopefully, I'm in Pittsburgh by then. Hopefully, he is. 
Hopefully. We're, we're going to see. We're going to see. But, um, yeah, this was fun again. So happy we brought this back. Hope you guys enjoyed. And uh, stay tuned for uh, Goalies Nature Hunt Season 3, Episode 7, tomorrow night, 7 p.m. Eastern time. We got the Suskin Screamer. Uh, Skinwalker, sorry, not Screamer. They're hunting the, the Skinwalker. And, uh, you know, these episodes, EJ, but if you've been following Goalies Nature Hunt, uh, that, that, that character, Brick, he's been acting a little strange, hasn't he? Yeah. He's been saying, like, off. other things besides Brick. And he's not yeah. himself. Something's not adding yeah. up. Something no, isn't something adding up. Enough. And, um, you know, sat- tomorrow night, Saturday night, might have some answers for you. So stay tuned for that and watch the episode. Ooh. Might have some answers on why Brick's acting a little weird. And, uh, I mean, we got a little bit of it last week in the multiverse episode towards the end. Spoiler alert. Um, but, uh, yeah, there's a couple more things answered uh, in this one tomorrow. Yeah, I got a lot of questions and I need answers. So. Yes. Yeah, so let's tune in tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern time. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for watching this episode. NFL Playoff Pick'em Season 2. We're done. See you next year. Go Stellars.